Maho Shoujo Magical Destroyers is an original underrated show featuring our main character, otaku hero with quote-unquote his magical girls to fight against a government-powered corporation which is wanting to rid Japan of all otakus. And it does not matter if it's anime, manga, plan model, aka gampla, car enthusiasts, idol fans or people who gather for example collectibles and such. We get a look at our number one otaku hero stand who got a father complex magical girl red anarchy chan, the always horny with the best transformation magical girl blue chan, and to top it off our neighborhood drug dealer magical girl pink with her nurse costume. Do you think we are finished with the three of them? Well, no, we got one more. Slayer, cause she's slain. Currently she's under the service of the so-called enemy boss to whom she has a Stockholm Syndrome, cause he's uh, the one who quote-unquote saved her and she does not want to disappoint or mine a villain TV head guy called Shobon. On the first look, this story is just a fight for justice for our otaku hero, to which his design reminds me of a character I seen sometime in the past, which name I do not remember. The story is slowly unfolding, we can see moving parts in the background. We get the feeling our lovely MC who is like a self insert for the most of us in the anime community is getting closer and closer to the mastermind. With the story progressing and our otaku hero finding his goal of freeing otaku so that they can enjoy what they like without being judged or ostracized, being able to enjoy their hobbies without being thrown to the jail. But not everything in life is so easy and sometimes even your free speech will get you in troubles. You wanna be spoiled? Okay, people will die in this show, so it's not a body bubbly setting. Let's be real for a moment. We would not love to be thrown into a setting where you have magical girls thrown into your arms and being THE hero. Having the whole team respect and follow you, being the leader who everyone looks up to and progressing the story while spouting your ideals with everyone cheering on you. Slowly through up the show you get the feeling something is amiss, the professor and the government, specters of the past. Even the past of the Maho Shoujo girls is being slowly unraveled. The opening and ending sequence are showcasing us the warped minds and the craziness inside the story and the characters. Even if the show flew under the radar of so many people, still the opening and ending are some of the best songs which the year could have given us, with amazing animation and compelling storytelling inside of them, slowly hinting onto what the story got in store for us. From the music we can feel the betrayal, crushed dreams, regret and sadness, ending with a bit of hope at the end of the tunnel. It's reminiscent of the song Sweet Dreams playing in the movie Sucker Punch. The music and atmosphere of both the opening and the ending sequence is giving us an eerie feeling that something is coming and it won't end up well. Being an anime which released in spring 2023, the same as Oshinoko, Heavenly Delusion, Hell's Paradise and so on, I'm a bit surprised about the rating. Yes? The story is really good, but the pacing was terrible. Throughout uh, the whole three months which the series aired, I still did have it at the back of my mind and I always came back to it. I watched it till the end cause I thought the story would redeem itself. The open ending could be a teller for an another season, but I would not bet my money on it. Still the show kept its suspense till the very end and delivered an ending which even if it's not the best one, it's not the worst one either. And because the opening and ending sequence are so much tightly intervened with the whole story in the opening, we could for example see that our main character Otaku Hero got some kind of deal or promise with our main villain Shobon or TV head. Maybe a deal, maybe a promise, which was forgotten and broken since childhood. I mean we do get the backstory of our main villain Shobon, and we get a bit of the backstory of our otaku hero. Still, there are some open endings which were still not explained in the season, so maybe there is a potential for a second one. For example, otaku hero's father did something in the past which helped or did not help otaku hero. For example, he got him the magical girls somehow. How or why it was never explained. But we did find out that they were created or man-made in a facility. 
Still back to the opening. Why are they talking about dreaming inside? So maybe the whole show is just a fever dream. What could be the visuals before the so-called last shot, which represents something like the last dinner? From the way the ending carries itself, we can see that there could be some ways the story can go. Either it is all a fever dream and our main protagonist is in the hospital on his deathbed dreaming about it all, or is it an empty metaphorical illusion? With the sequence of the ending being operation table and lights, hospital bed, dreams, he is about the three magical girls, him ascending and the girls being angels ending with an empty hospital bed at the end. The theme of dreaming is prevalent in the opening and ending sequence. After watching it till the end I can say the correlation between the ending and the ending of the story is there, but I won't say which is it, cause that would be a major spoiler. This is my honest review, on a scale 1 to 10 I rate it 8 as very good. If I have to say what I liked about the story, it would be the story on its own, the art, the progress, the girls and how they presented itself. What I didn't like was the otaku hero or main character, the pacing and probably the way it ended. Thank you for listening till the end, if you want to have similar content. Press like, comment and subscribe.